Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I've got a long overdue video, and I do apologize for how long this video's taken to actually come out. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing the awesome golf balls with the Garmin R10 and GS Pro. For those of you that don't know what the awesome golf balls are, they're essentially a foam, a hard foam golf ball. They're designed to mimic the flight of an actual golf ball, a real golf ball. However, they go one third the distance, approximately. Essentially, these things are just a hard foam golf ball. So in today's video, I'm gonna test them with the R10. I'm gonna make sure they do actually register through the bag, and that includes chipping all the way through to drivers. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go on the course and play three holes, and I'm gonna see how they go. Because I'm using GS Pro, I do have the ability to go into the settings and add a shot boost to my shots. So I'm gonna do the math, and I'm gonna figure out exactly what percentage I need to add to make these match my regular carry distances before I go on course. And then I'm gonna take them on course, and I'm gonna actually play three holes. Now, why would you get these? So the reason people get these is they're safer. You're obviously not hitting an actual golf ball in an indoor environment. It might be to ease someone into an indoor environment. People are scared, they don't wanna break things. These things are actually quite hard, the almost golf balls. So they will cause a bit of damage if they do hit something, but not as much as a real golf ball would. The other reason why people might use these is like myself, I'm in my garage and at night, I've had complaints from neighbors across the road about the driver sounding too loud. So these balls potentially will allow me to practice at night and it'll be a lot quieter, not only for your neighbors, but also for your family or other people living in your house. So I'm gonna run through my standard test. I probably won't show all the shots because that video would take way too long. I'll show some of the shots and then I'll get an idea of how these play before taking them on course. I have got the GC2 running as well because I wanna see how that performs. Okay, and we had our first chip shot and it worked. I do have the GC2 going, like I said, so that's actually really interesting. So, hey, carry 10 yards, 3,600 RPM, shot shape looked all right, and we had a carry of 12 yards on the GC2. I can't believe that registered on both of them. Okay, second shot has registered as well. That's really cool. We had 10 yards carry on the GC2, nine yards carry on the Garmin, 3,700, almost 3,800 RPM. Interestingly, the Foresight had 2,000 RPM on that one. Okay, that one came off significantly right on the Garmin. Uh, on the Foresight, it came off 0.8 of a degree left. So a little bit of a misread. Okay, that was pretty good for a final shot. 11 and a half yards versus 10. And what's funny is it doesn't feel like you're hitting a golf ball, obviously, because you're not. It's kind of a weird sensation. With a golf ball, you expect there to be something heavy that um, kind of really affects your club head speed and really gets in the way almost. With these almost golf balls, because they are foam and they're light, it just kind of, um, you feel a little bit of that, but you just swing through. So it's a, it's a weird, weird sensation. And we should see the golf ball come up short. Okay, that's a big difference. So that was a 60 yard feel. It felt like it should carry about 60 yards. We've had 46 yards on the Garmin with 3,500 RPM. And on the Foresight, we had 52 yards carry with 65, almost 6,600 RPM vertical launch angle. So. We had 24 degrees from the Garmin and we had 24 degrees from the Foresight. So vertical launch angle is reading correctly. Spin axis, we had a massive fade with the Garmin and we actually had a tiny draw from the Foresight there. So spin axis is slightly different. All right, so the Garmin had that 43 yards with 55, almost 5,600 RPM. The Foresight had that 49 with 7,100 RPM. So that one definitely took off left. It's a weird sensation when you hit this because you expect it to feel like an actual golf ball, but it doesn't, it's really odd. Okay, so we had uh, 116 yards carry from the, the Garmin with 68, almost 6,900 RPM. We had 123 yards carry with just under 6,000 RPM from the Foresight. 
Okay, 119, almost 120 with the Garmin, 5,000 RPM, 5,300. And we had 124 with 5,800 RPM on the Foresight. We had a slight fade with the Garmin, took off left and had a slight fade, and it took off left and had a slight fade with the Foresight. All right, let's jump into 7 iron. Okay, that came off low. That came out real low. Um, the Foresight did pick that up, the Garmin didn't. So that's our first no read from the Garmin. Okay, the Foresight again picked that up. Garmin didn't. Okay, much better strike there. The vertical launch angle was higher. So maybe those low vertical launch angle shots don't register on the Garmin. I don't know, we'll, we'll, it's interesting. So that one there carried 133 with the Garmin, 4,900 RPM. On the foresight, it carried 141 with 4,900 RPM. Hey, spins correct, or spins the same on both of them. Foresight had it taking off left with a fade. Garmin had it taking off slightly right, but with a fade. Okay, that one took off left. And it missed, we had a no read from the Garmin. The Foresight did pick that up. And it was a decent shot. Okay, that one's right. Again, the, uh, the Foresight picked that one up. Garmin did not. All right, let's try and hit one more. Okay, that was a nice strike. Okay, it did register on the Foresight. And again, Garmin didn't pick it up. So this is potentially where, what's ball speed now? So we're looking at 107 for ball speed. I'm gonna hit through the bat. I'm gonna keep this test going, but for whatever reason, it doesn't like picking up these seven irons. What I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna hit one more seven iron. I'm gonna try and hit it to the moon. I'm just gonna try and hit it really high and we'll see if it registers. Okay, so that was hit really high. So it was a 17 and a half degree launch angle on the foresight. So I don't think the launch angle is the thing that the Garmin doesn't like. Let's try and hit four iron and we'll see how we go. Okay, we got four iron. I don't know why I keep moving back to actual yardages because these things are foam golf balls. So, but hey, we're 200 yards. Let's see how we go. Okay, that one registered. That's interesting. So we had 146 yards carry with 4,300 RPM. It took off left visually in my room and the Garmin had it taken off left. And so did the Foresight. So they actually match quite well. We had 152 yards carry, 3,000 RPM on the Foresight. It started left and had a slight draw. And that's exactly what we saw on the Garmin. Um, carry distance slightly off, but Hey, we're hitting foam golf balls. Okay. The Foresight picked that up. Garmin did not. Okay, that was a nice strike. Yeah, Foresight picked it up. All right, let's try hit one more. Okay, it registered on the foresight. Garmin's having trouble with it. So I'm gonna do some more testing with this. I don't know if there's a limit, like say, you know, up to pitching wedge or up to, to nine, eight iron. I will do some more testing with this to get, to see where that consistency drops off. In this test, it was actually really good until seven iron. Let's try and hit driver. Okay, that felt really funny. It did register on the foresight. We didn't get it registering on the Garmin. Okay, hey, we had it register. Okay. So, we had 190 yards carry with the Garmin, 
4,000 RPM. On the foresight, we had 199 yards carry with 1,600 RPM. The foresight had it taking off 0.8 of a degree left with a fade. The Garmin had it taking off uh, a degree right with a fade. So at least shot shape's correct. I mean, the good thing about that is we've got club data on the Garmin. So I can look at all my club data, I can look at my metrics, I can see that the club path was 1.6 to the left, my attack angle was 3.4 degrees up, launch angle was nine. Let's have a look at the launch angle on foresight. It was 9.1. So the launch angles read correctly from both units. And that's actually really interesting. Okay, let's hit another driver. Okay, so we've had a misread from the Garmin. The Foresight did pick that up and that was actually a really good shot. Hey, we had it register. Okay, so we had 188 carry on the Garmin with 4,000 RPM. On the Foresight, we had 217 yards carry with 2000 RPM. Okay, let's do something fun. Let's jump into the settings and let's put our shot boost up to about 1.4. We'll save that. Please register. It didn't, I hit that one really well. So that was the best one I've hit so far. We actually had 224 as a raw carry there on the foresight. Okay, all right, so let's let's talk about this. So what we've seen so far, the actual chip shots, pitch shots, and pitching wedges were great. All of those were fantastic. As soon as we went to 7-iron, we started to see a drop off in the actual shots registered with the Garmin. Now of note, it did get a 7-iron and it did get a 4-iron. It actually even got a driver as well, or two drivers. But the issue is the percentage that it's actually registering the shots is quite low. Um, with the seven irons, it was one in seven and pretty much the same for the four iron and driver. So that being said, I'm not gonna go take it on a regular course to try. However, I am gonna go to a par three course because maybe this is something that you could use on a par three course and get consistent results. And let's go to Georgia threes, which is the official course, the par three course at Augusta National. So let's do that. We'll go to match settings. This is a nine hole course. It's a short par three course, so hopefully because we're using shorter clubs now, they should actually register. Okay, welcome to the Augusta National par three course. We've got 122 yards on this hole, so for me, this is just a solid gap wedge. So I'm gonna hit a gap wedge. What's our percentage on? Let's have a quick look. So we'll jump in settings. If we go to game, we've got uh, 1.4. So we've got 40% we've got added to our shots. I might bump that up. Let's go 45%. Okay, we had it register, which is good. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, maybe I need to adjust the ranges a little bit. Let's actually have a look at that. So that went 109 and we're adding 40%, so that's 149 carry. Yeah, I've, I've definitely, definitely adjusted that too much then. It's almost like, because they're a foam, they're a hard foam golf ball, it's not a linear progression of distance. So for example, the gap wedge that I just hit, 109 yards, that's only lost 10% of um, the, the carry distance that I would usually hit. Whereas when I was hitting that driver, it was more like a 40 to 45% loss, which is what I based uh, that shot on. So that's quite interesting. And this shot here being 47, I'm almost tempted to think that that's gonna play kind of like a normal 47 yard shot. Let's just add 8% onto this shot. Okay, it's not bad, but have a look at that spin. So. The spin there was quite low, and I know we are coming out of the rough, so we've got to expect a little lower spin, but that was very low. And look at this. We're gonna go all the way down into this swale now. Okay, now we've got a 33 yard shot. We're uphill five, so that's 38 yards. What a shot. 
stay in there. Very nice. And that's a bogey on the first. That was a really good chip. Okay, 82 yards. And this is hard because the longer the hole, the more shot boost you're gonna need, if that makes sense. I'm gonna play this at about 10%. And I reckon that should be pretty good. And that's actually not that bad. That's a pretty good shot, I'll take that. Okay, and we're on to our final hole now. Uh, we got 94, but we're downhill nine. So 85. So I'm just gonna hit the exact same shot I just hit. Ooh. Okay, not a bad shot. A little bit long. That ball flight was nice though. Spin 66, so that's obviously low. Okay guys, that was the awesome golf ball with the Garmin R10 and GS Pro. Final thoughts. If you're gonna use this ball for a short game, so anything up to say pitching wedge, for me, it did work. Um, and I was able to play the par three course. It wasn't great golf though. It wasn't, it wasn't realistic and I kept having to adjust the shot boost depending on which club I was hitting. I think the awesome golf ball is one of those things that if you do want to get it and try it, it might work for you. For my shots in my environment and my setup, the awesome golf ball didn't really work that good. When I got to seven iron, it wasn't registering shots. That continued on for four iron and also driver. If it did work 100% of the time, this would be a great tool because it means now you can start working on club path, face to path and also attack angle. So I'd love to see Garmin incorporate something in their software, maybe that has a mode for the awesome golf ball. Maybe if they partnered with them and said, hey, can we add a mode on your app that will allow the awesome golf ball to be read better by the Garmin? I'd love to see that because then it means you could just go into that mode with the awesome golf ball, the distance it all be calibrated for you. And even if it was only using it in home tier hero, I think that'd be very beneficial for Awesome Golf Ball and also Garmin. I think it would benefit both companies. Hopefully that happens in the future. I think if people do want that to happen, you're best to reach out to Garmin and ask that. But as far as using them right now with GS Pro that I just tested, I'd say they're not really usable at this stage. All right, guys, I hope you liked that video. If you did, let me know. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.